part is, is there a supportive story? So when we do this at the macro level with international policing or Singapore government or uh, World Vision in London, we see they develop a strategy, but it's not supported by the story. So if it is, as someone up there said, what you said, the dormitory of, of, of Melbourne? So you have to find out a new story where it's no longer a dormitory. It's changing that. So we always think through, we always ask ourselves, what might be the new metaphor? What's the possible new story that can support the long-term strategy? Otherwise, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Now, why do metaphors matter so much? Why isn't it just the data that convinces? Again, as I suggested, when you give people data that doesn't support their story, they reject the data. So we start working on how do we find a more compelling story for the future. Now, the reason why this works is, again, many studies on this. My favorite is two groups of people. They said they gave them similar data on criminal activity in their neighborhood. Group one, the metaphor they used is crime is a beast. Group two, crime is a virus. Then they asked them, what's their policy recommendation? The group where it was a beast, they said, put money in jailing criminals. The group where they said it's a virus, they said put money in education ending poverty. Same data, different policy recommendation, decisive factor, the metaphor. Now I just finished another special issue of a journal on this and our, the, we, another study that came out was an, a group looked at immigrants into the U.S. They said the U.S. is like a body politic. Then they showed images of harmful bacteria. The respondents said, no, we don't want migrants. So this is the whole notion how the story actually overruns parts of the brain related to rationality. So when I ask groups, I won't ask now, what would be a better story? People say, well, nutrients. Show nutrients, then people will want nutrients coming in. Show probiotics. Show a food court. So if your politics were different, you would select a different story. Now the power of the story, this has again just happened recently. If you follow U.S. elections, Mr. Trump was thinking, how do I defeat the Democratic nominee. So he understood her gender was different than his. So he said simply, all Hillary has is the woman card. Now if she accepted his metaphor, she was now stuck, right? Because then she was saying, I'm only running on being a female, not on her other attributes and skills. So this is where the story defines your strategy. Most people debate each other within the terms of the other story. The goal is to never do that. You win the debate, you lose the argument. It's to change the story, to change the terms of reference. So she did that at a level of genius. She said, yes. He said, Hillary will play the woman card. And she said, yes, deal me in. And she passed out something called the woman card, which suggests, as we know, females get 70 cents to the male dollar. So here's a new story, deal me in. Here's a systemic strategy. We need to equalize pay or find ways, to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? This is really the power of narrative shifting strategy. When we work with librarians, there was palpable pain for many months. Not just in Australia, but I've done this in Thailand, other countries as well. The pain is we were the keeper of the collection, a valued, honored profession. Unfortunately, Google Kodak them, right? They were made irrelevant for most of us. So they started to shift their story. Among the stories that came out is we're innovators of the gardens, meaning we'll do 3D printing, we'll do sustainability, we'll develop new renewable technologies, we'll have workshops for the elderly, we'll play in different places, we'll think about equity. So this is, we change our story and then we do a different strategy. So this is the powerful part there. When we work with the Singapore government of transit, the Ministry of Transport, the old story is car is king. Our friend there suggested, well, everything should be in reach. Meaning it's a walkable city. Better for health. So this is you change the story to everything within reach, then you design the urban plan. This is for a New Zealand animal science group, and I've heard there's a biosecurity group here as well in, in Geelong. So the current strategy was big fish in a small pond. They produce animal health safety instruments. They want to go to China, but there'll be a small fish in a big pond. So what's the better strategy? If they go there without learning Mandarin, they're a fish out of water. 
So their new strategy was swim in a school, meaning send your vice presidents to KL, Singapore, Taipei, Seoul, develop the alliances, then go into the new market. This was a project two weeks ago in Pretoria. I was working with the CSIRO. And they said, right now our science is like an elephant. Slow, endless reports we have to do. We have to convince the minister, then the prime minister, it takes forever. So our story is not helping us in national science innovation. So we worked on the new story, which was a band of uh, meerkats. They're always looking up, right? Has, has, has anyone seen meerkats? They're looking towards the horizon for new possibilities, and they're a band peer-to-peer -peer science. I was approached by the roofing industry, and I told this story yesterday. They said the roofing industry in this country will likely collapse if current trends on technological innovation and roofing continue. They said, what do we do? I said, I don't know what to do. I'm not a roofer. But we have methodology. After four days with us, they developed their new national strategy. They go from roofs just keep me dry and the umbrella as a metaphor to the multi-adapter system and roofs provide essential services. 3D printed roofs, roofs that do the NBN, roofs that do your solar panels, roofs that basically become intelligent. This then becomes the new model for the future of roofing in this country. I said, okay, you're head of strategy for Australia, what do you do now? He said, I have to convince my board. You know, they may say no, nothing needs to change. But he said he's convinced based on the data he's seen, they need a new story, a new strategy, and that's what they're working on. So let me ask you again, just in a minute, what's the old metaphor for Melbourne? No, not for Melbourne, the dormitory one is in Melbourne, and what's the new one? So what's the new story for Geelong beyond the dormitory one? You may have your old one, but what might be a new metaphor? Not a strategy, not a scenario, what's a new powerful metaphor for Geelong? Again, in your small groups, just take a minute, and this is metaphorical thinking as our colleague there in the back did. So in the next 10, 15 years, what's a new powerful metaphor that can create a new future? That's not a metaphor, that's just a statement. <laughs> that's a nice statement, it's still just a statement. <laughs> so think with your colleagues, again ask, what's a better metaphor? I'll get to you your metaphor, just wait. Once everyone has their hand up, your metaphor goes first. Your second. Okay. Was that, was that a hand signal you want to turn or you're just, just okay? It's like a baseball signal if you follow Major League Baseball. So we got two people with their new metaphor. Again, only responses based on the new metaphor. We got three. I'll take a few more, four. Now remember, metaphor is like. It's not a strategy statement or a scientific fact. Okay, we got four. Let's see, anyone else? Five, okay, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's your new metaphor for Geelong? I think we need a, a change of culture in 1986. Okay. When I was transferred to Geelong, yeah. I did an assessment of the culture in Geelong. Yes. The conclusion I reached then yeah. was that Geelong was subject to a master servant Yes, beautiful. So, beautiful. So the old metaphor is master servant. What's the new one? The new one should be the people in charge of their own destiny. I got it. That's not a metaphor. That's almost there. Master servant is powerful. Think about what's the new metaphor. That's a statement about power. And changing the, uh, the culture to. Yeah, I got it. You have. As we go through, I'll conclude with you. Find the new metaphor. You've just given me a statement. Who was the second one? I lost track. Were you? Oh yeah, yeah. Two. Yeah, go ahead, please, yes. Um, the old metaphor is that John, Geelong was an industrial agricultural city. Okay, that's still... For Western Victoria. Yeah. The new metaphor is that uh, Geelong is the creative lifestyle city of Australia. Okay. And it combines three elements. Yeah. It is the Silicon Valley analogy in Australia. Okay. This is one city where we can do all of those things. Okay. It is the lungs of Melbourne. Okay. Like the Yarra Valley is you one got of the it. other lungs. And it is a lifestyle city where people want to come, okay. like the Gold Coast has reinvented itself. So the silicone lungs of Australia, not bad, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to create you, you, you're giving me descriptive statements. Metaphorical thinking is very difficult. It's really a different part of the brain. And most people who are good at systems, at analysis, they actually can't do it. We're almost there, please. Tweak it slightly, we'll call it clean green ballerine. 
That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm actually okay with that. Clean green velvet, that almost rhymes. Have you thought about rap your next career? <laughs> okay, was fourth, was fourth, and there was someone there. Please jump in. The old metaphor we had was the picture you had before, the botanic garden. Yes. The new metaphor for Geelong is the bionic garden. Oh, no. Very clever. Very clever. Using technologies wisely. Fantastic. The bionic gardens. There was someone here? Uh, yeah, please. The, the, the yeah, please. Yeah, please. Tell us. We are now Melbourne's resort. Oh, that's interesting. So dormitory yeah, suburb to retreat. retreat resort. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. That's not bad. Others? There's one there? And two there? Yes, sir. Um, a city of blue collar yeah. to the city of multicolored colors. Yeah, not bad. So rainbow collar. That's not bad. I've never heard that before. I've heard of gold collar. You've gone a step further. But your collar's white. I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> I just was just playing with you. I like that. Rainbow collar, multicolor. Nice. Over there? Uh, Geelong was once called the pivot city. Yes, pivot. That. Yeah, that's right. So pivoting to the future, kind of. Yeah? Playing with pivot. Very clever as well. Over here? Ah, nice. Of keeping our wonderful good yeah. things about our past yeah. and adding new yeah. whilst keeping yeah. the past. Geelong as a balanced equation, a, a dynamic equation. Yes, yeah. Don't throw the baby out. Beautiful, very beautiful. Others? Was there a few others? There's some random people. I can't tell if you're just scratching. You're there. Okay. Geelong is always called Sleepy Hollow, so I'd like to see it as uh, the idea, probably with the garden as well, as, as the spring garden. So it's uh, ah, okay. fertility, emergent, yes. uh, responsive yes. um, in, in many ways. Yeah. So sleepy, sleepy Hollow to Fertility Garden. Was it that? Did I understand that right? I yeah, got yeah, the yeah, old something one. Something that's, that's emergent, whether it is via technology or the people, that's something that's constantly, uh, okay. I guess, coming out of a winter or a, or a, a, a phase that, that is just okay, so uh, vibrant. You, and, and we almost got it. Just keep on working on it. <laughs> yeah. Sleepy hollow work, it's kind of your, your botanical bionic garden, something around there. Emergent, new. Over there, please. city. Okay, that's good, but still a description. What would be the reinvention? What's the metaphor that reinvents the city? So hold on to that. That's, that's again a description of a possible metaphor. Not quite there. Please. The Ikea of civic design. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. I'm not sure you want to go there, but that's not bad. The Ikea of civic design. Okay. There's so many levels there. Uh, Kathy? Does it come with an Allen key? Ah, nicely said. Nicely said. That comes with the Allen key. Brilliantly. Over here? Yes, yes. So maybe a slogan for us rather than a metaphor. Yeah. Is it where there's wool, there's a way? Oh, that's not bad. Okay. <laughs> We're getting very clever here. You're getting it. Okay. Fantastic. Did you, did you come up with the metaphor? No? Okay. No, you, you had the statement. It was pretty good. Master, servant, too. Okay. Hold on. Keep, keep with it. The old, just as yeah. with the garden theme, the old thing was the botanic gardens are over there. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. But the Lifestyle, living, breathing, yes. city is to bring the gardens yeah, to everywhere. The yeah, everywhere. It's beautiful. It we had a mayoral meeting in Brisbane, about 250 mayors from around the world, most of the Aussie mayors, and it was going from exactly that to the Amazon city. Amazon yeah. So it's actually the, it's breathing, nature is everywhere in the smart sense. So that's very cool. 